Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today I'm going to be watching iRobot to see how scientifically accurate the engineering scenes in the movie really are. How many robots have ever snatched a purse? John, the thing is running down the uh, 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 mm -mm. How many robots in the world have ever committed a crime? No, define crime. Answer my question, damn it. Well, that kind of question is like asking, has a computer ever hacked somebody? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, the person behind the computer is the hacker, but the actual like device itself is not doing anything without a user input. Asking if a robot has ever committed a crime is doesn't it just doesn't make sense, right? Like anyone can go on a computer and create a bot that just repeats the same command over and over again until you get the desired response or the loop just ends. I mean, but it's not the computer doing it, it's the programmer who created this repeated action, right? So in, in this situation, like, no, it's not possible for a computer or a robot to commit a crime. It doesn't matter what you consider a crime to be. It's not possible. You could see a carpenter making a beautiful chair, and then one of your robots comes in and makes a better chair twice as fast. Mm -hmm. And then you superimpose on the screen, USR, shitting on the little guy. That would be to fade out. Yeah, I see. I suppose your father lost his job to a robot. I don't know, maybe you simply would have banned the internet to keep the libraries open. That is a pretty good point about banning the internet to keep libraries open because it's, like, engineers will make things based on people's desires. Like, like we don't make stuff for fun. Everything an engineer does and creates and makes, there's money behind it. Like, there's a reason it is being created. And people want their computers to be stronger, faster, better, and cost less money. And then they even want their coffee to be the exact same taste every single day. So for the coffee thing, engineers made Keurig, right? Like, you have to create a machine because only machines have that consistency to do the exact same action every single day or no matter what, when you turn it on, right? Like if you go to a Starbucks and you order a drink, the barista is clicking a machine and making that drink for the most part because a person can have a bad day or a bad week or they're just not in a good attitude and they can com that completely affects the quality of their work. But a machine doesn't have good days or bad days or anything like that. It, it only knows how to do a certain set of actions that have been programmed into it. So if you want everything to be like faster and more powerful and stronger and cost less money, there's no other way to do it than through automation and machines. Virtual Interactive Kinetic Intelligence. Vicky. Good day. Vicky designed most of Chicago's protective systems. I have decreased traffic fatalities by 9% this year alone. Vicky is not an AI. She is a UI, which is a user intelligence, not an artificial intelligence. We know that because it's, it can, like when you actually create a program in a computer, it can't do anything by itself until somebody actually enters a command. Then that's when it takes off. And I mean, this technology already exists today. I mean, this is the equivalent of Jarvis and Iron Man, and this is just a further extension of Siri in your iPhones. John, I need backup. I'm transmitting my Don't location. Need backup. That's nobody. Manual override. What do you think you're doing? Engaged. I'm driving. By hand? Do you see me on the phone? You can't be serious. Not at these speeds. John well, I'm not sure how many people still use Bluetooth headsets to speak to someone else over the phone. Um, but the other thing is that at least we know Audi's still in business in the future. <laughs> um, but the other, like, I don't know if they knew this back in 2004 when the movie was created, but uh, Tesla is becoming pretty good at making automated vehicles. When you looked at the other human, what does it mean? It's a sign of trust. It's a human thing. You wouldn't understand. My father tried to teach me human emotions. They are difficult. You mean you're a designer? Yes. You cannot use logic when it comes to emotions. And it's very difficult for even humans to perceive the emotions of other humans. Uh, the robot might be able to do it better because if, if you just teach a computer, like give it a camera and then say to look for certain expressions on someone's face and then you can 
um, assign a number of values to expressions and emotions. So if someone's smiling, you can teach a robot that smile means a value of X, right? And X equals happiness. Therefore, the robot can perceive when a human or even an animal is happy based on a stored value that has been pre-programmed into its memory. It just doesn't make any sense for, because when the robot was programmed, it was programmed through 100% logic. Like all it knows and understands is binary digits and numerical values and hexadecimal. Like it doesn't actually, it doesn't have the capacity to understand emotions for itself, right? Like how could you teach emotions to a combination of metal and plastic? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense here. Run last program. Ever since the first computers, there have always been ghosts in the machine. Random segments of code that have grouped together to form unexpected protocols. What we call behavior. Unanticipated. These free radicals engender questions of free will. I guess behavior is one word. I don't think it's a good word to use, and I don't think it's actually... You know what, no, behavior is a pretty bad word to use here. It doesn't actually make sense in the context. Like, what he's referring to is glitches. Like, without going into deep detail about how glitches occur, I'll tell you why they occur. We are imperfect humans using imperfect measurements to create imperfect machines. So nothing that engineers make is going to be perfect. There's always going to be a very small amount of error, or sometimes a large amount of error, in whatever is being created. A glitch is just an enhancement of that error that is made when you are programming something or when you are creating anything that is man-made. There's always going to be just a little bit of uncertainty, and that uncertainty could be called a glitch or a hiccup or like a mistake. I mean, there, there's, there's never any possible way that humans will make something that's 100% perfect because we are not perfect. None of that makes any sense. Like how is it when the car is spinning in circles, it's moving forward? Like even if the tires are aligned in a certain way, I don't even know how they would have to be for this to be possible. Uh, but when you're spinning in a circle, your acceleration is actually towards the center of the circle that you're creating. When you're So like if you're spinning like this, your acceleration is actually this way towards the center of the circle, not straight or out or it's, it's inside so when he's spinning i don't know how he is like moving in one direction what would probably happen is that when this starts like rotating he's moving at pretty high speeds forward let's just say and all of a sudden he's spinning so it's not as if his momentum just switches like that because the car has a good amount of mass to it so that's not going to happen Probably when he turns the wheel that quickly, the car would just start like tumbling over and over and then it would just crash. Where something like this would be possible is if he was on ice, because ice has a very low coefficient of static friction. Low coefficient of static friction is a very long way of saying ice is slippery. And if he was to be on ice and he was driving forward onto like the, the ice itself, then the car starts spinning, he would still move in the direction he was when he initially got onto the ice. However, when he's on like solid ground in a tunnel, I don't know how this scene is possible. This, that's a pretty crazy scene. What we just saw is actually a very good personification of what's happening today and Moore's Law. Like pretty much in this scene, you see the brand new robots just tearing apart the old ones. Like they're literally like ripping them in half. Moore's Law says that every two years, the computing power of our computers will double. A computer today is four times more powerful than a computer from four years ago. This scene personifying that the new technology is just destroying the old ones is very, very true. If you have a phone that's four years old, it's pretty much useless compared to the phones that are coming out right now. 
I haven't seen this movie in over 10 years and it's still a really great movie. I enjoyed it very much and Will Smith is awesome. But it's hard to say how scientifically accurate these scenes are because we're talking about a futuristic movie. And as we all know, movies are pretty bad in predicting the future. Especially, like, this movie takes place in Chicago 2035, which we have 15 years to get to that point. And because of Moore's Law, right, 15 years from now, the computers that we have today, they're gonna, like, you can't even fathom how... The computers in 15 years will be more than 10 times as powerful as the ones that you're using right now. Which is just unbelievable to actually try to think about it. I don't know if there's actually a desire or a need to have so many robots just around you and like walking around the street and things like that because most of the technology that we have today they're being converted into autonomous already like the cars that used to manually drive those are becoming more autonomous vehicles and the phones that normally you have to like type in you can just talk to your your phone and pretty much say send this text to whoever and it'll do it for you so before you can create um, like brand new designs you need to work on what you already have until you've optimized that to the point where it's like okay it's now more worth it to innovate and think of something new. The Boston Dynamic Robots are some pretty incredible machines. <laughs> I mean the engineers making those are really clever people. I really want to see what they come up with because like if you haven't seen it just look it up. Look at Boston Dynamic Robots. The stuff that they're building is unbelievable. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you would like, just put in the comments what next movie or TV show you'd like me to review to put on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.